the lessons of history include parallel evolutions of the same kind of changes in other transitional waves. In other words, you can go back and say, all right, what a very good way to, to experience what you're living through is to go to somebody who's going from agriculture to industry or from hunting gathering to agriculture. Uh, James Mishner's book, The Source, is a great novel for doing this because it takes you through a, a spot in Israel for 4,000 years and gives you a feeling for and it starts with hunting gathering and gives you a really good feeling. It's a, a pretty good novel. Uh, look at the early t Old Testament as a fascinating record of the transition from a hunting gathering nomadic society to an established agriculturally based society. And isn't that exactly what's happening? What is the meaning of the story of Abraham and his son laying on the rock and the angel comes down? Yeah. It is the end of human sacrifice. This was a people describing to themselves the moment at which they decided they would no longer sacrifice their children, something which the Aztecs never got to. Although they didn't sacrifice their children, they sacrificed prisoners. But notice this moment in the Old Testament, and you literally see the nomadic agrarian Israelis becoming city people and becoming uh, farmers. And much of the fight in the, in the Old Testament is between the Israelis and the more urban and more commercial <coughs> Mediterranean gods. So the whole fight with Baal is all about. It's a style of life. And so they go and they take Jerusalem, which becomes their city. And if you read the Old Testament in, in that sense as a historic document, it is a fascinating study of the transition of a people from nomadic into agricultural to having an urban high civilization with a temple and a kingship. And that's why, and you see literally the, trans, the transition uh, to kingship, don't you? Saul's the first king. And so you see these, these patternings, and it's, and it's well worth looking at in that sense, literally as a study of the transition into an agricultural society. What you've got to look at is what are the characteristics of the third wave information age? And, you have, and literally we need for people to be in a habit of looking around and talking about this and saying, okay, what did, what did I learn this week? Because I find in my case, every week that goes by, I'm learning new things. I'm seeing new experiences. I'm having new data come forward that I had never thought about. And you do it by looking at the newspapers, by listening to television, by talking to people, and, and literally just sort of gathering, and not trying initially. Don't try to force them into a pattern. Don't say, oh, wow, now I see how we go back. Or, equally bad, boy, I see how it fits. You know, my model's the circle. Now let me take all this new data and make it fit the circle. What you want to do is literally just let it be data. Let it tell you. Don't you tell it. Then you want to try to build the principles. You know, what, what are the principles going to be of it? One is that it's going to be global. Another is it's going to be very personal, simultaneously. So you're both you and the planet simultaneously. Now how does that work? Well, we don't know yet. Then you've got to look at what are some of the new habits. One of the habits had better be learning. I mean, learn. Another habit, by the way, is exercise. And there's a very profound reason why exercise is suddenly emerging. Why do people think about exercise? In an agricultural age, what did you have to do? Work. Work. In an industrial age, what did you have to do? Work. Okay, I, had, I mean, I had an uncle who was a steel worker. He thought the idea of going to a gym was insanity. He wanted to go to a bar. <laughs> he'd, I mean, he'd put in eight hours in the gym. It was called the steel mill. Some never <laughs> ah, but now you go to the gym first. Why do you go to the gym first? Because you don't do hunting gathering, you don't pull a plow, and you don't work in a steel mill. So literally as a biological organism, again at the risk of getting in trouble, you have a, you have a genetic need to exercise. You don't stay healthy if you don't exercise. <laughs> so suddenly in a third wave society, you have a whole new habit, which will then lead to new institutions, which may well lead to whole new ways of thinking about the tax code. I mean, you know, what if we encouraged you to stay in good enough shape that you didn't get a heart attack? Which is cheaper, to keep you in good shape or to give you triple bypass? Well, just think about it. I mean, we, see, we don't even think that way over here. That's a stupid idea. Well, why? Let's, I mean, let's do a mathematical study. Why is it a dumb idea? Why isn't wellness a learnable, trainable, habitual, incentivized system? Because it can be if you work at it. And companies that are doing it, by the way, have dramatic drops in cost. Why do they have a gym? Not because they're being nice and coddling people, because it lowers the cost of their health insurance. 
Now it takes three years, but in three years' time they are making money by getting everybody to be well. Well, what if you did that as a society? Now, as you look at the new habits and the new institutions, and I would argue that, that Gold's Gym in that sense is an emerging third wave institution. And then you find, that you find others. I mean, I, I think FedEx is frankly a third wave institution. And the great power of FedEx and UPS is not the airplane or the truck. It's the computer that tracks the package. It's that, it, it is the human training. I, I once spent a day in, in a, a UPS uh, uniform in a truck and I followed the package from picking it up to Louisville, sorting it and bringing it back. And it was amazing. And, and a UPS or FedEx delivery person, man or woman, is a full service, holistic, small business standing right there. I mean, they deal with the customers, they take the material, they take the money, they do the recording. It is an astonishing system. And is, I think, very much a third wave. And so you've got to look at some of the new systems of the third wave. And we've got to look at the, the and, and you've got to start, and you can start looking around you and saying, what's going to work? Uh, telemedicine, distance learning, are emerging systems. The kind of ambulance or helicopter where you have air, all the diagnostics are in the vehicle. And you're literally doing the diagnostics with the best brain surgeon in the world as you're going from the accident to the hospital. And so when you arrive at the hospital, you've done everything we used to do in the ER. You go straight to the operating room because you've already done everything. And you've done it with a technician who is not a doctor, but who is working electronically under the doctor's direction. Now that's the third wave. And it's going to happen all over the place. And you've got to look at new words and meanings of the third wave information age. I mean, as I said earlier, microwave, fax, which by the way, again, in the American tradition was facsimile, it became fax. I don't know what cellular phone's going to become. Is, it, is there a word yet? That, your cellular's too long. Personal communication. Well, that's right, the personal communication system, P, which, which is, by the way, PCS. Read Yeah. What about Me. the French who are trying to freeze their culture by making non-French words? The, the, the loose. They'll just lose. They're going to have trouble communicating. Sure, and they'll just lose. I mean, I mean you, 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 you can't, in the long run, keep an entire supra-civilization out of your society. So. You know, they, they can go through very elaborate. I mean, the German, I think, for telephone was far speaker. Huh? Is that what you are, the far speaker? Yeah, I guess I'm the far speaker. That, that different meaning. I'm the far speaker from the far side. Uh, that's a different meaning. That's a different meaning. Yeah. That's a different meaning than the German. But the, but the point is to create, you know, to create that kind of thing. And by the way, that is part of what the problem is in terms of, and I, I said it as a, as a joke because it was too good not, not to, to say. The truth is because, because we're used to politicians who are here, what I'm trying to do, which is understand and discuss this, does mean that by the standard of this, I, I, am, I am outside. And so that, in that sense, your, I mean, your comment was, was, was uh, in a different way true. 